Hi everyone. Well, I'm getting ready to take my morning coffee walk around the garden. I really need this time to just relax before I jump into the day, especially with all the craziness that's going on in the world. So I thought, why not bring you guys along as camera guy to film. And I also want to take this chance to introduce ourselves. So camera guy, come on out from behind the camera and let's introduce ourselves to all the new subscribers that are here on our channel. So for those of you that are new, I'm Callie Kim, this is Camera Guy, and you want to say something about your name and everything? <laughs> well, it, years ago she called me that out, out of a fluke and it kind of stuck ever since. So I've taken the name Camera Guy. So, so his real name is Jerry, but he films and edits our videos and we have a lot of fun outdoors together. So Camera Guy, head on back behind the camera. Okay, and we're doing a tour at and the same time. And we're going to do a tour and take a little coffee walk at the same time. And I forgot to introduce a very important part of our channel, and that is Mac, our garden dog. He loves to be outdoors with us, likes to follow me around the garden, and somehow, you guys, he always knows when the camera comes out. So watch for him in our videos. Now, we live on a hill, so I just wanna show you a little bird's eye view of the garden here. We love to sit up here and just enjoy the view. Um, you can see the fountain in the middle, the beautiful flowers surrounding it, and um, it's just a, a beautiful spot for us to relax and enjoy the garden. Now come on over and let me show you our little kitchen garden here, which is right outside our back door. This is a little spot where I like to grow just a few vegetables so I can run out, uh, pick some lettuce, pick some herbs, and then take them inside for a meal. Um, so here I've got some beautiful, uh, I think this is a Napa cabbage, that, which is going to seed. And these flowers are edible. The pollinators love them. And I love how the beautiful yellow flowers look. And right down here in this purple smart pots are some radishes. I think these are the French breakfast radish. They're a really beautiful radish. So if you're looking for an easy vegetable to grow with kids, radishes are a great one. And it's just so relaxing to come out here among the beautiful flowers and the beautiful colors. Just enjoy a cup of coffee and start my day off with a peaceful moment, even if it's just right out here. Now these beautiful um, sugar snap peas are growing and also need harvesting. So I think we may be doing some harvesting a little bit later on. So grow yourself a couple really simple salad vegetables as close as you can to your kitchen door. And that way you'll be more likely to just run outside, pick some and pop them into your meals. Now right here I have some seedlings that I started from seed indoors that I've been acclimating to the outdoors for about a week now. I've been uh, moving them in and out at night because our nights have still been in the 40s, so it's a little bit too chilly for them. But I am hoping to get these planted out in the garden soon. I've got some basil, some tomatoes, some peppers, even a little papaya tree on the end there that was given to me by a viewer, which I can't wait to get planted. And another little thing I wanted to mention is we are going to be doing a small space container garden series sometime this month. And I'm thinking we'll probably do it right here in this spot. So if you're interested in growing in containers, you want to tune in for that. We're going to have lots of tips on how to grow a lot of food in a little bit of space. So let's go down to the main part of the garden now. Well, before we go down to the main part of the garden, one thing I forgot to show you here is this lemon tree. So I'm really excited about this. This is the second year I've had this lemon tree and these lemons, I think they're also ready to harvest, a couple of them anyway. But we're also getting some new blooms and some new buds here, which means hopefully this year we're gonna have a lot of lemons. And by the way, guys, it smells really good right now too. Oh my goodness, that fragrance is amazing. Oh, it's just wonderful. So we're gonna head down the stairs here to the main part of the garden. And let me, let me show you around down here and have a few sips of coffee along the way. And there's just something about sipping coffee first thing in the morning. The garden just makes it taste so, so good. Now, one reason why I love coming out here in the mornings is because I love listening to all the sounds. You can hear the birds chirping. I'm just gonna be quiet for a minute so you guys can listen. Isn't that beautiful? Now one thing I've planted right here, this is called a veggie pod, and I actually transplanted a whole flat of kale in here. You can see all the little kale plants 
a couple little charred plants and they're planted in here very very densely and I'm not going to be leaving them in here but I didn't have a spot to, for the, a permanent home for them in my garden so what I'm going to do is just transplant them in a couple of weeks as I have spots available but this provided a really good growing space for them in the meantime. Now one thing here too is there are a whole bunch of tiny Tim tomato plants that actually made it over the winter time. They were stuck back up here in the veggie pot against the fence. I think it really protected them. There is some cold damage on them, which I'll tr be trimming off, but there's also a lot of new flowers coming out, and I'm really surprised. I didn't think they would make it over the winter, but I just wanted to experiment and see what happens, and I want to encourage you guys to experiment in your garden too. Try new things, see what works. You might be surprised. Come back, let's take a walk. Now right in this area here, the nasturtiums are absolutely going crazy. If you've never grown nasturtiums before, they are a great cool weather flower to plant, especially early in the spring. They grow very, very easily from seed. You can direct seed them or plant the seeds directly in your garden beds. They love temperatures under 80 degrees, but they don't tolerate frost. So make sure you plant them after your last frost date. But here they're absolutely going crazy. In fact, I'm gonna to need to trim them back pretty soon because I'm gonna be planting some tomatoes right here. And as soon as the peas are done producing, these are beautiful sugar snap peas. Aren't these flowers absolutely lovely, you guys? I love how they look. They're growing up and over the trellis here. In fact, let me get back in there and show you this beautiful pea. I planted a couple of these this year. This is a magnolia pea from a Baker Creek Seed. And would you look at this flower? The color of this flower is absolutely beautiful. And these tendrils are lovely and they grab on easily and climb up a trellis. So as soon as the peas are done, once the warm weather hits, we'll be planting some squash and tomatoes in here. But the nasturtiums are just cascading over and some of the nasturtium leaves are literally as big as a small dinner plate. So as we get more hours of sunlight through the day, the nasturtiums will be in full bloom and it will be just a blanket of color in here. Now I did forget to mention at the beginning of the video that we live in Southern California. So the winter time is the perfect time for us to grow the cool weather vegetables like the peas, the nasturtiums, the lettuces. And right now is actually the end of our cool weather season. So that's why everything is so lush and blooming right now. But if you're just coming into spring, get some of these cool weather vegetables planted as soon as you can work the soil after your last frost date. Here we've got some more peas climbing up the trellis. And what I wanted to show you here too is this sage plant. Sage is a delicious, very aromatic herb. It is a perennial here in California and also in many zones. The leaves are absolutely beautiful. And this sage plant, I've actually been growing here for about seven years, believe it or not. And I trim it back every single year to just bare stick. So I trimmed it back over the winter time. And what that does is help it generate fresh new growth. And now it is growing back. And I wish you guys could be out here to smell these leaves with me. Oh, they just smell so good. On my morning coffee walks, I don't like to do a lot of heavy duty work. I just like to wander through, smell the garden and enjoy. Now I love this little hidden spot of the garden. It's just so pretty and so peaceful. The flowers are starting to come out. These are calendula starting to bloom. Look at the color on those flowers. It's just so enjoyable to see that bright splash of color. And then there's a beautiful green down here, which I absolutely love. It's been growing here um, for a couple of years. This is called red vein sorrel. Would you look at the color of those leaves and the texture? This is a perennial green. I've cut this back many times and it keeps on growing back. It's so delicious and nutritious too. You're gonna love the look of that in a salad if you grow it. And I wanna share a little bit with you too about how I like to grow strawberries. Now, a lot of you have grown strawberries with me in the strawberry crate towers. If you're first time strawberry grower, I highly encourage you to stack up some crates and I'll be doing a new video on this soon and plant some strawberries and you could even plant other types of greens in here too, which I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. Even though the strawberry tower needs a little bit of trimming up, there's some fresh new strawberries growing, which is such a beautiful sign of spring. These are probably gonna be ripening up over the next couple of weeks. There's all kinds of little teeny tiny ones and flowers. This is gonna be so much fun. Fresh berries are so delicious and they're very easy to grow. 
Now this kind of gives you a perspective on where our house is in relation to our garden. You can see it up above us. We walk down the hill to the center point of the garden, which is this fountain planter. Now I like to grow a lot of peppers in here and also some herbs. So the peppers are just starting to come out again after the winter time. This is a really super hot Thai chili pepper that actually a viewer um, sent me. And I pruned it back in the winter time and I was just kind of letting some of the chilies dry up so I could make some red pepper flakes, just leaving them right on the um, plant here. And you can see there's some new little leaves peeking out, which is a really nice sign of spring. And I also planted a whole bunch of chives here along the edge. I love how they just kind of drape over the edge. Chives are such an easy perennial herb to grow and you can just give them a little haircut. I'm just gonna pinch some off here because we're gonna go in and have breakfast after this. And they grow right back. So highly encourage you to plant chives in your garden. And the fragrance, oh, it's just so good. Now the other thing about chives too is that you can actually divide the plants to make more plants or share plants with a friend. So you can see right down here how they're growing very, very thickly. You can just get your shovel, dig the plants up, break them apart, plant them in another area of your garden, or give a bunch to a friend so they can have chives too. And these chives actually happen to be flowering. The flowers are edible and so, so beautiful. Now in this section here, there's some tomatoes that overwintered, which means they grew over the winter time. We didn't get a frost here this year. So these, again, although there is some cold damage, they're producing tomatoes, which is super exciting. I'll have some really early tomatoes. These are an All-America Selections winner. I believe this is a yellow patio choice, which is a really nice container type tomato. You can see this one here, uh, I don't know, that one might not make it, so I'll probably go ahead and pull that one out. Um, but this right here is probably one of my favorite spots in the garden right now because of the way the nasturtiums are just growing up through this tomato cage that I left in all winter and just kind of spilling over. It's so beautiful. The nasturtiums, in case you didn't know, all the parts of the plant are edible. The leaves you can put in a salad, the flowers you can also eat, the bees love them, and they kind of have a really zippy flavor. And then once they are done, the flowers have reached their peak and are drying up, they drop seeds everywhere, and a lot of times they reseed year after year. Now last summer we grew some tomatoes in this giant sturdy tomato cage, and we have a video on how we built this sturdy tomato cage. I'll link that up in the video description. But over the winter time, my favorite, I planted some more peas. This is a yellow potted pea, I forget the name of the variety, but growing beautifully here right now. And one thing I wanted to let you guys know is, if you don't have raised beds for your garden, it's super easy to build one. We built this one and did a video on it last summer on how to build it for under $25. We filled it with some repurposed soil, added some worm castings and soil amendments, popped it up and we had a perfect spot for our tomato cage here, which is now a cage for peas. And a little bit of room in here, you could plant some herbs or some other smaller vegetables around the edges. I think these are calendulas, which haven't quite bloomed yet. So a lot of people have asked about our living wall of trees that we planted a couple of years ago. As you can see, they are growing crazy, especially now that it's getting warmer out. There's a lot of new growth, and it's really helping us uh, have a nice green backdrop to our yard here. Now in the summertime, I love to grow peppers in this planter because it's the sunniest spot of the yard and the peppers absolutely love the heat in this particular location. But over the winter time, I just tried to throw down seeds for greens. So this is one of my favorite varieties of lettuce that I'm growing right now. It's called Bronze Mignette. Aren't these leaves absolutely beautiful, ruffly? I love the texture, I love the color. These are in my lettuce seed collection. So we have been harvesting and eating bronze mignette lettuce almost on a daily basis. And here's a little pot of kale I planted just a few weeks ago actually. Started the seeds indoors. And if you don't have a lot of space, grow yourself a couple containers of greens. If you have enough space for one of these little five gallon containers, that's all you need. You can grow yourself some salad greens. They're so fresh and so tasty, and that way you don't have to go out to the grocery store as often. Really important these days. Well, here I've got a pepper plant that I overwintered. A lot of you watch that overwintering your pepper plants video. And I actually just brought it down here and put it in the sunny spot. We're sitting in a shaded location. Now that it's getting warmer out, 
I can even see a teeny tiny little leaf right here. So this will be getting some new growth on it very soon. And this plant I planted a year ago, it overwintered, and now it's gonna give me peppers again for a second year. Now, for those of you that are still in the cold, in the snow, I hope you're really enjoying this tour. We really wanna send some warmth your way and just encourage you to hang in there. Spring is on the way and hopefully warm weather will be coming soon. I've really been enjoying the nasturtiums because once the weather gets hot, they die out. So right now they're in full bloom and it's just such a relaxing feeling. And it just makes me so happy to see the color popping out all over the garden. One thing I love is the different colors of nasturtiums that are growing. It's fun to just come out here, and just observe, and just soak it all in. So many different colors on this one. The red, the black in the center, and the bees absolutely love them too. And there's these beautiful yellow ones with a reddish, center there. Then these variegated orange ones. The pale yellow with the orange center. It looks even a little bit different. So I want to encourage you, take the time to enjoy the colors and the beauty of your garden. Let it just relax you and fill you with peace. And I'm really excited to see some blossoms popping, popping out here on my orange tree. Got a couple oranges off it last year and I'm hoping for a whole bunch more this year. This is growing in a container. I'm not too sure what size container it is, but it's been growing in here for several years and every year we get a few more oranges off of it. Some more of the bronze mignette lettuce. A couple little violas popping up. Some little tiny zinnias that reseeded from last year. And then here, I'm really excited about this because I love sunflowers. The volunteer sunflower that just popped up here. Sunflowers are a gorgeous warm weather flower and I cannot wait to see them bloom. They always just bring me so much joy and happiness. They're just so bright and cheery and a real sign of summer. As I take my Morden Garden coffee walks, I also like to check on my plants to make sure they're doing okay and also see if there's any problems so I can stop the problems before they get out of hand. Now here I want to check on a tomato plant that I actually tried experimenting a little bit. I put it out a little bit early. Like I said, the nights have still been in the 40s, some in the 30s. So I think this is the Marglobe tomato from my Spring Garden seed collection. And I can see here that the bottom of the plant is getting kind of yellow. So I want to take those leaves off. That's probably most likely due to um, the cold temperatures. So I'll take the bottom leaves off here um, just to keep the plant um, growing healthy. And no worries, um, the weather's going to be warming up. It'll grow some new leaves. I'll keep an eye on it, see how it does. But all in all, it looks pretty good. This tomato plant growing right behind it was also kind of an experiment. I've been weaving the plant as it grows up through the trellis and this has been growing out here all winter long. I almost took it out, but I'm actually glad I didn't because now it's getting some new little blossoms on it. So I'll just see how it grows. Maybe it'll grow up and over the trellis and hopefully I'll get some tomatoes out of it. This area of my garden is what I like to call the Smart Pots deck because I'm growing in Smart Pots fabric containers, which if you've never grown a garden before, containers are a great way to start. Smart Pots are a good fabric container that you can just pop up Fill with soil, you have an immediate garden. The fabric is super durable, it's breathable so it drains well, and um, you can grow a lot of vegetables in containers. Now, like I mentioned, I like to walk along and see if there's any issues going on in the garden, and here I see one right here. This is a Napa cabbage that I let go to flower because the bees love the flowers, I love the flowers, but I can see here there are a bunch of tiny little aphids on here. Can you guys see those? Those little gray bugs? Those are aphids and you don't want those in your garden. But if I am going to have aphids in my garden, I'd rather have them be on this plant that is just for the bees right now rather than on a plant that I'm going to eat. But if they do get on your kale or on your lettuce or on your broccoli or your other plants, what you can do is just rinse them off with a strong spray of water from your hose. Do that every day. If that doesn't work, then you might want to try something like neem oil, which is an organic pesticide that you can spray over a couple weeks period of time that disrupts their life cycle and helps get rid of them. So there's actually quite a bit growing here in this eight foot long raised bed. I just planted some kale and some other greens a couple of weeks ago. This is a purple kale. I just love the look of these leaves. 
They make your salad absolutely beautiful. And here's a little tiny red chard plant. And these leaves are actually delicious when they're picked young. I'm gonna let them get a little bit bigger. I like to pick them when they're about the size of my palm. And they're nice and sweet and super tasty in salads. And here again is the red vein sorrel, such an ornamental, beautiful, edible plant. One thing I am really excited to see coming up here along the back side of the long raised bed is dill. I planted dill seeds a couple of weeks ago and it's always just such a joy to see new plants sprouting, germinating. You can see they're developing little teeny tiny true dill leaves. And if I got down here and smelled these really close, they're starting to smell like dill. These are gonna be so tasty in eggs, in salads. When they get taller and they bloom, the bees love the flowers. They're a cool weather herb. So get some dill seeds started first thing in the spring too. Now, a few weeks ago, we did a video on three easy vegetables to grow when you can't get out to the grocery store. Super important right now, right you guys? And one of them is beans. Now, I planted my beans a little bit early, but I'm so glad I did. They're doing very, very well. They're growing kind of slowly because it's still uh, colder temperatures at night, but they definitely are growing. And these are some beautiful bean varieties. This, I believe, is the Royal Burgundy Bean. They always look a little bit purplish. The beans are definitely purple and the leaves are so pretty. I planted a, I think this is a yellow wax bean. And there's another one in here somewhere called a slenderette, which is a smaller type variety of bean. But if you're growing vegetables with kids, please plant some beans with them. They grow and sprout very quickly in warmer temperatures. And your kids will absolutely love having their own little container or even their own little cup of a bean seed growing that they can then transplant out in the garden as soon as the weather gets a little bit warmer and you're past your last frost date. So on that three vegetables to grow when you can't get to the grocery store video, the first vegetable was beans. The second one was peas, which we've already talked about a lot here on this little tour. So get some peas planted. A little five gallon container works very well for peas as well. Put a few tree branches in it and you've got yourself an easy DIY, totally free trellis. Now the third vegetable we talked about planting on that video are greens. And here I've got a container full of arugula growing, looking super beautiful. I planted it in a spiral type of a pattern. And I'm thinking some of the seeds I planted might not have been arugula because they're coming up with kind of purplish stems. So I know I do have some arugula in here, but I could have got some other seeds mixed up in here as well, but no worries. I actually want to come through here and thin these out by snipping them at the base every two inches. And I can use the thinnings in a salad. And then the other um, remaining little uh, plants in here will have a little bit more space to grow. Now arugula is a cool weather green, so it's a, spring is a great time to plant it, but as it gets warmer out, you're gonna wanna have some heat tolerant greens growing too. And I have one right here called New Zealand spinach. This is actually in my heat tolerant greens collection. You can see it looks very similar to a spinach leaf, but spinach grows best in the cool weather, but New Zealand spinach grows very well in hot weather. The hotter, the better it will kind of trail over this container here. And this New Zealand spinach, I have cut back probably for a couple of years and it keeps on growing back. So it's a really good long growing plant to have in your garden as well. Now, hopefully you caught my how to plant garlic video a while back and I was super excited the other day to see that there's some brand new little garlic shoots growing here. Garlic is a perfect plant it and forget it kind of crop. A lot of people plant it before their last frost date but you could also go ahead and plant it in the springtime. You might not get as large of garlic bulbs because garlic does need cold weather in order to um, grow nice and large, but give it a go. Grab yourself some organic garlic from the grocery store, break the bulb apart into little cloves, plant them pointed side down. And as the weather gets warm, you're gonna see these little shoots come up and you can harvest it about six months later. Now I am really excited about this little garden bed here. It's a little bit hard to get to. So what I decided to do was just plant some wildflowers. It doesn't get a ton of sun. So these are actually called a partial shade wildflower seed. Um, and they're coming up absolutely beautifully. I just planted them maybe three weeks ago. And with all the rain we've had, I haven't watered them at all. And it's so much fun to see 
fresh, new green growth. So plant yourself some wildflowers in an out of the way spot of your garden. The bees are gonna love it and you're gonna love the color pops. So I'll make sure I come back and show you these as they start to bloom. I'm really excited about this. Well, I wanted to show you a nice wide shot of the hill right behind me here. The rain we've had over the past few weeks is just creating a carpet of green and color cascading down over the hill. So let me take you through it and show you what's growing. And I hope it brings some enjoyment and peace and relaxation to your day as well. Come on. So right now over the arch here, the nasturtiums are starting to climb. And as the weather gets warmer and the nasturtiums die out, I definitely want to grow some warm weather vegetables. I'm thinking maybe some cucumbers. I'd really love to grow some watermelon over these arches. I just came out with a brand new watermelon seed collection. I think it would be so much fun to grow the sugar baby watermelon, which is a nice, small, compact version up over this trellis. And just see the watermelon hanging down, I think it would be so much fun. So let me know what you think about that too. I also want to grow a lot of tomatoes and cucumbers. Last summer I grew cucumbers on this trellis. It worked very, very well. This is just a cattle panel, which we cut to size for this particular garden bed. Put some nice sturdy heavy duty posts in and it made a really nice sturdy trellis for my cucumbers. Right now we've got some peas growing, which we're going to be harvesting today. Now one thing I love to do is plant flowers in with the vegetables. Not only do I love the bright pop of color, and you will too, but the bees love it too. Now here's a super easy flower to grow. It's actually an herb, it's called borage. The flowers are so delicate and such a pretty shade of purple. It kind of smells like a cucumber, but they're very easy to grow. Plant them once, they will reseed and the bees will come to your garden like crazy. These are in the Bring on the Pollinators warm season flower collection. I can just get lost out here in the garden. The sounds, the smells, the color, it really helps take my mind off everything crazy that's going on in the world. And I hope you're finding enjoyment in your garden as well. Now I showed you some arugula a few moments ago that I just planted. This is an arugula that has bolted, is now flowering and going to seed. So I always do like to leave some plants in to flower because the bees love them. And of course the flowers look so beautiful too. Then once these little pods dry up, you can harvest seeds from them for your next planting and help yourself be sustainable in your garden. As the weather warms up here, a lot of these cool weather plants will start dying off and it's where I'm gonna plant my cucumbers, tomatoes, and squash. Here I left this tomato plant in over the winter time just as an experiment. Didn't expect to get a lot of tomatoes off of it, but it has been climbing up this little trellis and it's starting to grow again, which is always really exciting to see things bursting into life. Now, for those of you that joined us for this video last summer, this is a little trellis that we made out of something called ladder mesh. We were able to find it at Home Depot. I think this whole trellis cost about $10 and it's probably about, what, maybe seven feet tall. We had some cucumbers and some tomatoes climbing over it. It's a really inexpensive way to trellis in your garden. So let me just move up here and show, and show you another beautiful pea plant that's climbing up over the ladder mesh. So this again is the Magnolia tendril pea and I love how this looks climbing up over the trellis with the peas hanging down. I just think it's so beautiful with these flowers. It just gives me so much enjoyment to come out here and harvest some of these peas and just eat them right in the garden. These are so delicious and so tasty and actually have a little bit of a pinkish purplish color on the pods. And these can be eaten pods and all. So good. Now, particularly in the springtime, this is always one of my favorite spots in the garden because it just turns into a carpet of green. In a few weeks, it'll be a carpet of bloom as long as the cool weather holds. There's a lot of poppies coming up. The poppies bloom in all kinds of beautiful colors, pinks, red, and oranges. And they'll bloom until the weather hits about 80 or 85, and then they'll start to die off. But it's such a beautiful spot just to sit and relax and enjoy for a moment. Now, as I walk up the hill and wind up my morning coffee walk garden tour, there's also a few edible plants right up here I wanted to show you. This kale plant here is mammoth. 
and this plant has been here for probably two to three years. Now the leaves are getting a little bit um, large and uh, maybe not quite so tasty to eat anymore. So what I'm gonna do um, very soon here is trim back this kale. So if you have kale that's looking a little bit ratty, don't pull the entire plant out. What you can do is cut the plant off at the base here and kale will grow back time after time. You get some nice, fresh, new baby leaves that are gonna be beautifully sweet and perfect to put in your salads. One last little edible green I wanted to show you is growing right down here and it's called miner's lettuce. Now I planted this once a few years ago and it spread all over my garden. You can see now it's kind of starting to go to seed, but it's very tender and tasty in salads. And I actually read that miners actually grew this back in the day to give them some nutrition as they were mining because they didn't get a lot of fruits and vegetables and the miner's lettuce was so easy to grow and then they were able to get some nutrition in their diets. And we love growing it here too. Well, I hope you enjoy this morning stroll coffee walk garden tour. I know it brought me a lot of peace and relaxation. Thank you so much for spending time with me in the garden. Comment below how your garden is bringing you peace and relaxation and joy in your life right now during this tough time in our world. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy life. We'll see you on the next video.